Hello and welcome to these very special episodes where we're going to go through how you would go about getting started with our game jam in creating your own escape room. So if you're watching these videos it's because you want to get a good start on how to create this. Now you don't have to follow this series of videos to get started with the game jam. You can use whatever method you like. But for those who are looking for a kickstart into getting started with the design for their escape room, uh, I'll set up these videos so we can explain some court key concepts and how you can get them working together. Also, you may also just watch this and learn some cool new t uh, tricks and tips to make you for your own games as well. So at the moment I've got a static escape room here. I've got switches, I've got a door, I've got another switch, and I've got a platform. These don't do anything. They've got no code in them whatsoever. I've just designed the appearance. That is it. Even the door's light is static. It's just a light. Okay. So how do we actually get this to look the way we want it to look inside our game and interactable? So this all relies on an interface. So I'm going to go and add new blueprints and choose a blueprint interface. And we're going to call this one the interact interface. Inside your interface, we're going to have two functions. The first function is going to be your uh, interact function. And you're going to have another one called activate function. Now the interact function is when you want to interact it with something to do something with it. Whereas activate means it's going to be turning off or on based on what we do with it. So we're going to hit compile there. And we actually let's make a deactivate one as well whilst we're here. So we'll activate, deactivate and interact. Hit compile and we can close that for now. Then we're going to make our door work first of all. So the door as I said has got no code on it whatsoever at the moment. It's just its visual appearance. So I'm going to go into my class settings and add the interact interface to my interface section. So go add and search for your interact interface. Hit compile then go to the event graph. So on the event graph we're going to get rid of this and create two custom events. So custom event here and we call this one open door and we'll make another one here called closed door like so. Open door is going to go into a timeline. Add timeline and this will be called door opening. And if you've watched my previous videos about doors and you'll recognize a lot of this from that. Um, closed door will go to reverse and then go to open up your door opening by double clicking on it. In here we're going to add a float track so click on the F button here to add a float track and we call this one door position. And this is going to be a normalized value from 0 to 1 so we're going to do shift click to make the first key point and shift click again to add the second one. The first point we're going to select and change its time to 0 and its value to 0. And the next point we're going to do a time of 0.5 and a value of 1. And the length up here we're going to change to 0.5. And there is our door position timeline. I've done that, hit compile and then close that tab. You'll now see the float track is an output on our door opening timeline here. So from there we're going to use that to calculate the position of this door. And I'm going to make this fall all the way down to the bottom, like so. Okay, so I'm going to do minus 290 in the Z here. So I'm just going to go back to my event graph and door position. We're going to do here times float, so not float vector, and in the Z we're going to do minus uh, 270. I think it said. Double check that. Yeah, so 270 will do just fine. So minus 270 there. And we're then going to drag the static mesh out and tell this mesh to set its relative location to this new location. And now it goes into update. So open door is going to do that, closed door is going to do that. Okay, so when we actually are going to call this open door and closed door, well, let's do on when we interact with it. So I'm going to right click here and add the interact event. So you see add event, event interact. And this is coming from the interface. From there, we're going to do simply open door. Hit compile. 
Okay, so there's the interactive event, but open an open door and closed door. But we don't know a way yet to actually interact with it, how to call this event. So for that, we need to go to the player character. So let's go to my player character. And in here, we're going to add the event for the E key. So scroll up, find the E. There it is. And on the E key, we're going to do a line trace out. So do line trace by channel. And the start point is going to be the position of the camera. So drag the camera component out. From there, get world location. And plug that into the start. The end point is going to come from the rotation of that camera. So from that camera, get forward vector. And then multiply that vector by the range that you want to be able to interact with it. So I don't want this to be remote. I want it to be quite close. So I'm going to do simply 200 for this. And then you're going to add that onto the start location. And that will offset it into the end like so. So that's when you happen to be pushed to E key. On out hit, we're going to right click on this and split it. And we only want to do this if we've got blocking hit. So let's put a branch in and put in for blocking hit. And we also want to do another check. So put another branch in for true. But the condition for this is going to come from the out hit hit actor. Drag from there and search for does implement interface. And then from there, you want to choose your interact interface. And when we interact with this thing, we want to tell it to do something. So we're going to go from there and call the interact event from that hit actor. And you want to choose the interact message. So the player is the one that's calling the interact events. OK, and this particular thing is going to interact with the door for this testing purposes. So let's go back to my door. So when I call that, it will trigger this, which will trigger open door. So let's test this out and push play. So if we go up to it and push E, it will open the door and let me to walk through. Okay. However, bit of, not much of an escape room if you can just go up and open the door. So let's tweak that a little bit. So on my door, I'm going to add a new variable in here called is locked. And when we go to event interact, we're going to check whether or not is locked is not true. So do not and put that into a branch. So if it is not locked, we're going to do open door. If it's false, then you could do things like uh, sound effects, messages, whatever it may be. Okay, so let's, let's just do a print string in here so you can see that working. Print string, door is locked. Hit compile. So by default, I'm going to turn is locked to be true. And when I go up to interact with it now, it shouldn't let me through the door. Door is locked. So now comes the process of setting up so the switches can do stuff. So let's make it so that when this switch is triggered, it'll do something. So I'm going to go to my switches here. And switches are going to be like triggers. Things are going to be doing something. And in here, we're going to set this thing to have targets. So on the variables list, we're going to click on new variable and call this one targets. And targets verbal type is going to be an actor. And we'll make it an array. And you do that by clicking on a little ball icon and change it to a grid icon for array. Once you've done that, click instance editable. And we'll show you why that is the case in a moment. Hit compile. And we're going to delete all this stuff here. And we're going to add an interact event for this thing. So go to... Uh, oh wait, sorry. Go to class settings. First of all, add the interface here. Interact interface. Hit compile again. Now you should find the interact event. Event interact. So when this thing is interacted with, we want it to go through these targets and tell them to activate. So 
event interact we're going to do drag our targets out do a for each loop for them and with that for each loop for each of these array elements we're going to tell them to activate so do activate message and that is it hit compile and we'll close that down so if I were to click on this switch here on the right hand side you can see now I can have a targets setting and that's what instance editable allows us to do it allows us to change things in the editor so here I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to now use my eyedropper tool and pick the door as one of the targets so when the switch is triggered with the interact it's going to tell the door to activate on the door we're going to have an activate event to unlock it so let's right click activate event and we want to say is locked get and we want to just toggle this the other way around so from there we'll make it equal to not boolean and set that back to that and that'll toggle it so if is locked is true it becomes false if it's false it'll become true and like so so event in activate is going to be triggered by switches and other triggers that will then unlock the door and allowing us to walk through it so if I were to push play now go up to the switch push E on it then go back and push E on the door and away it goes now obviously you'd want to put in some sort of effect or some message or some light or animation something on that switch to make it look like you've actually pushed it um, but we're just going through the basics here so how can this go further well let's make it so that when we hit this switch we raise this platform which then we can access to this switch which activates this door so on here we're going to change the target here with the eyedropper tool and click on this platform actor that I've made again it has no code it's just the platform actor then on this switch I'm going to click on that choose new target I'll drop a tool and choose this door so I have to when I'm playing this click on this one then traverse over here click this one and then I can go through the door so now we need to put in the code for the platform so the platform we're going to make it raise rise up sorry so much like the door we can go to the event graph and let's get rid of this and go to class settings add the interfaces here and do interact interface now this one doesn't need the interact function we don't want the player to interact with it but we do need to activate it so right click do activate event and then from there we're going to tell it to do the timeline add timeline platform rising open this up new float track platform position and then again shift click to add your two points the first one being set to zero and zero the next point being added to uh, let's do two and value of one change the length to match the time there to two and there we go compile that then go back to your event graph then we're going to drag our static mesh out to set relative location and this one's going to rise up so we take the door platform position here multiply that by a vector and we're putting a value of in the z here by let's let's work out how much we need to rise it by so at the moment it's 100 so if i were to raise this up i need to go to another 140 up so let's rise this by 140 and plug that into new location so when this thing's activated by a switch or other trigger we can then call this platform to rise up so now let's push play and let's go activate this switch and you see the platform over there rising up giving us access to the second switch which then unlocks the door 
Excellent. So the last thing we'll do here is just show you how the activation and deactivation of a door being locked or unlocked will change the light. So on my door here, I have a light indicate to the player when it's unlocked and when it is locked. On the event graph here, I'm just going to do on act event activate and we'll do a branch for this. So if is locked is true, let's move this over to the side here. If is locked is true, rec light, in a set color and we'll set it to that red that we got and save me a shortcut I click on here just drag it up to the top to store that value that means I can go on here just click on that same red then if it's unlocked in the false I'll make that green and drag that up top here and click OK and then click compile. So now let's test that out and unlock the door. There's the platform. And then over here, we hit the second switch and there goes green, unlocking it for us and letting us out of the escape room. And that is a basic example of how you can use the switches with Activate and Interact to do uh, stuff. So to recap, the Interact event will be used for things that you want the player to interact with, such as switches, doors, or levers, things like that. If you want the player to, uh, if you want the something to be activated by a switch or a trigger of some kind, then you want to use the event Activate. So you've got plenty of things you could do with this. It's quite flexible. So one example could be like a shooting gallery. If the ball enters it, uh, enters a trigger volume, make that trigger volume and trigger all the targets on our switch that we have, like so. And obviously this switch can do multiple things, so we can add multiple targets to this. So for example, if I was to make this switch trigger the platform and unlock the door, I go new uh, target and choose the eyedropper tool and click on the door. So now both of those will be triggered by that switch. And again, it just gives us loads of flexibility. And there you go, both have been triggered. And you can add as many as you like to that. So loads of flexibility for you to design whatever it is you want to do. Uh, I've, I've seen some examples in the past of some people doing it with um, invisible volumes that when you trigger it, it activates a lock for the door. Um, they have to go back and reset. Um, passcode stuff you can use as well. Maybe you've got hit switches in a certain order. Uh, maybe some switches disappear, reappear if you switch, hit them. You can make them move, make them invisible, whatever you want to do. Um, and that's it. Okay, so this is a simple starting guide, starting point for you to get started with your escape room game jam entry. And it's all down to you and how you design your level, what you want to do with it, and what you want the player to achieve. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this has uh, been helpful for you and helps you get a good start on the project. And um, all the best of luck with the game jam. And if you've already taken part in the game jam, you're watching this later, well done. And if you have not taken part in the game jam and you're watching this later, hopefully you've learned something and seen something really interesting and really cool in this anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.